viewers welcome back to my channel this is the one I've been promising for a couple of weeks now um, that was requested uh, a few good, good few videos back uh, to do one about the dendrobiums and um, I've waited because I wanted these to come out of the um, propagator and I wanted more flowers and I had, because I had different sizes and I've been doing different things and I've got small pots, I've got big pots, no pots, um, mounts with different things. I wanted them all to be at the right stage before um, I put this little thing together um, because it's just, it saves doing it in bits. The only thing I'm not going to do today, which I could have done, I haven't got the stuff ready and we were busy doing things out here this morning because my husband's put me up this new shelf which is why we're doing this in as much space as we can and I've got a whole bench to myself which never happens in my greenhouse but he's put me up a shelf um a greenhouse shelf to replace the monstrosity I had and gives me more space down here this is not where the um only eyes live we're in the warm greenhouse with no fans on and I am baking I have to say but um, that will be fine for a little while now what we're going to start with um, these plants I think they're just stunning and people have done a lot of um, propagating with them, mixing them with other things to get these beautiful colours on the flowers because the species themselves are quite small. When you've got big flowers like this and tall, um, tall stems, you know you're looking at a hybrid. Um, and you know, as soon as you look at that, in there is going to be the glomeratum, which is the um, bright pink flower, cerise pink flower I showed you of mine with the three spikes and the flowers on the bottom, which is still in flower. Um, one uh, cane has dropped all the flowers, but one's got four on and the other one's got four on so we've still got a while to go as they take their time dropping the leaves the interesting thing is that um the growing in the different media with these because um i've got a couple that i've left in what they came in because of where i got them from i knew what they would be in and i knew that they do well in it and i didn't want to disturb them and this is one of them this little beauty with all its flowers so there isn't much wrong with that is there but whichever way you look at it it's a hybrid and this one was you can hear the little bit of grits falling because it's um i don't know what the mix is i think the mix with the grit it's a it's a fine grey grit and it comes from Schwerter's in um, Germany. It's a fine grey grit. And I'm guessing there's moss in there, but I don't know what else until I get them out of here, which won't be happening until um, these flowers have gone. Um, and that could be any time. I've got one here. This was bought at Malvern from Equigenera on the 15th of June, 2018. This wishy-washy flower has been on this mount nearly a year. It had two, one dropped last week. This one's not yet dropped. This is the new one and you can see that by the color. 
and this one is a species and it's Cuspertsonii bicolor which is why you've got two colors and we've got another flower coming that I don't think will be on there for much longer um, I think it will um, drop within a week so uh, but you can see how compact and here's another here's another species again a compact plant this is a red and you've got red buds I think this was but I can't remember where this was bought oh yes I can at the same time at the same time as the bicolor and these mounts grow in the cool greenhouse um, I've got some cool, I've got some, the majority are in the intermediate greenhouse. They can take any temperature from cool to warm, apparently. Um, the ones in the um, intermediate house I grow hanging from the picture rail, the picture rail. Duh, we are not in a house, we are in a greenhouse, so I hang it from the hanging basket rail in the eaves not right up in the eaves, it's about halfway down the roof. Um, so it gets a lot of light because they, where, where they grow in New Guinea, they grow at high, very high elevations on moss covered trees and mossy rocks, which are near streams. They'll also grow on cliff faces. Um, and they can also be found, they're also found supposedly in shady places as well as exposed mountain peaks. So which is in typical alpine habit, where they are also exposed to breezes. So they are, they are a very adaptable species. That said, some, some people still have problems um, with them. I have problems with them. Um, it's only in the past year that things have come together. I have still got a ropey, let me put those two back. That's the red and the bicolour. There's an orange and a xanthina, um, the other species. This is a hybrid, not you, you. This is um, blah, blah. Dendrobium Swiss Mountain Palace. Two-tone orange, um, not, as, not as nice a colour as this. Um, but this is between Cuspertsonii and Mountains Butterfly Kisses. Well, that is a Cuspertsonii hybrid that was made, which I think is pink and white, or more pink might be wrong because I've, n I've not never got hold of that one. I ought to try that actually. I've tried everything else. I ought to try that, but I haven't. And this was, this is, this one is my mounted one is the only mounted one that's kept in the um, intermediate house. And he looks quite ropey. He started going um, very leggy with the roots and the canes. But now the colour and the texture is coming out on the leaves and I'm absolutely soaking him every day. Again, he's hanging and he's hanging on the wall of the greenhouse. Um, he's about a foot from the eaves. He might not even be that far. It might be about nine inches. And he's doing okay. Um, whereas, you go back there. Thank you. This one, which is one of the Dendrobium Cuspertsonii Crossulawesiens Cuspertsonii. Now he went backwards, but as you can see, I didn't do anything. I left him to his own devices. We're now coming back. We've got. Lots of new growth. What he objected to, Lord alone knows. But it, this is coming back. This was in the cool house. So, I won't say they're best mounted. I think the species are, do very well mounted because of the rate at which they grow. But um, I think the hybrids like to be a bit more vigorous. So this, now that we're putting all this out, if we've got some new roots coming in the not too distant future, um, maybe by the end of the summer, give, give these um, new growths time to mature. I can actually see, I don't know if you can see in there, I can actually see, where are you, there you are. 
I can actually see down in there, there are new growths coming out of these new bits. So what I might do with that is take it off because it's a hybrid and put it in a pot. Now, some people grow these in moss in pots. I steer away from that because I am lethal, lethal with moss. But I am getting very good at letting these dry completely. That said, this one is too dry. It's being dunked in the water. This is, um, where did this one come? I think this came in um, June 19 from uh, Equigenera. And it's Casper Sonia Xanthina, so this is the yellow form. Why I put it on that side, that in that ridiculous position on this mount, I don't know. Um, but it's slowly picked up and it's slowly growing because the ones that come from Ecuador, they have a lot of recovery to do. Now, with these, I've got them hanging. I don't know, let me see if I can see that in the picture if you can see what's there yeah you can so you can see the tray the clear tray okay i do the same as i did with the um sarcochylus i hung them from the flower rail and um i bought some from different places and these species all these little ones are species oh maybe that one that one's not. That's a dead glomeratum cross cuspid sonii. And he is just picking up. But he's a very wishy washy colour. You never can tell what colour you're going to get at all. Um, but here we've got the orange one. The orange species. And he's in moss with just a bit of bark on the top. And I've got polystyrene at the bottom because it doesn't need all that. And here we've got flower coming there, flower coming there. So, um, and this dinky little flower is just opening. But this dinky little flower looks as though he's got a bug in there. Ha! We won't have that, will we? No, Mr. Mealy bug, you can do one. We don't have a bug in there anymore because I've just got him out. So he's opening and he will um, it'll take ages, it'll take ages for the others to catch up with him. So um, this one is supposedly purple. This is a species purple one. I think it's a wishy washy purple, as you can see, it's taken a while. This one is in. Got bark at the bottom, a bit of moss. And I wanted the roots to grow on this because this was going backwards when we I got it back. Where are you? There you are. When I got it back from Equigenera, when I went to Melbourne, it um, went backwards and the slugs got it. But it's coming back now, so it does all right up there. What's that one? That's another. Ah, here we go. This is another named hybrid. Dendrobium nagomi pink, which is Dendrobium cuspersonii, crossed with brachytosum. I still think that's a wish wash pink, personally. But he's doing all right. And he, considering he's a hybrid, he's not very vigorous. But he, again, was of the lot that came from um, Equigenera. And because of the journey they have to come over here, they take a lot of growing afterwards. When they do grow, they will reward you tenfold, which this little one's doing, except this is coming from, oh, this came from Schwerter's. This is a species I bought from Schwerter's, which I think is another orange. He's doing all right. He's got roots coming out. I think he's in a mixture. Yeah, he's in a mixture of grit and moss, that one. So, all of these in the little tray are species. Now, where they grow in their natural environment, some of them grow as low 
750 meters but more often than not they're found between 6,550 and 11,500. The ones that grow in the high alpine environment they need much more moisture for their cultivation and they won't tolerate high continuous heat either. Where they occur, especially in the mornings, the temperatures drop to five degrees centigrade and below, but they will tolerate um, high light in the mornings. And they have to, because they have to get used to the various, which, which is what makes them such a diverse um, genus to grow. Sorry, I'm melting here, no fans on. Um, it's a trade-off. I don't know where they came from, so I'm guessing when I put them where I put them. But all of these you see here, down here, are on the bench at this height in the intermediate house. Humidity's maintained. I've got two fans going, so there's a complete cir circle of fan. I've got one at each end of the greenhouse on alternate sides, one going down one way and one coming up one the other way. And they're proper greenhouse fans, so there's a bit of power behind them. So there's constant, constant air movement where they are. And yes, it does get hot in here, but it, the fogger comes on. And you can see these wouldn't produce these if they weren't happy with where they are. Um, it's it's a trade-off sometimes. This one is one, I think this is a red one I bought from um, Acorn because they had one and I wanted it. That one, horrible, horrible snail has got, but this one is growing on. This one is growing in small bark. I've never moved it. Grew in acorns like that, so um, I carried on with it and I know what they do with their plants, but it's got two two little red flower buds. Being a species as well, I grow it still on the, on the bench. Or does this one go in a tray? No, this one goes in a tray up higher. This one goes in a tray with this little lot back here. There's another bigger tray with bigger ones on. And there's one with a flower going over. And there's some that I bought. Oh, this lady let me have them. I think she wanted to sell the last of them. And she had five that she wanted to sell. Um, she told me a price and I said, well, if you let me have all five, I'll take all five and I'll pay you this. And she did. And I've been growing them on um, in these little mesh pots. They're now ready to be tidied up and potted up properly. Um, there's another one. Where's the other one? There's one there. This is one's a bit more vigorous than the other one. We've got new, look, we've got new growths going there. What's that one? This is another Swift Mountain Palace, that one. Oh, that one's coming out of there. I'll put you back in there. One in the middle. He's growing quite tall. And there's another one in there. So they all need now to be... Um, but you can't dictate this year, say you're going to do Cuspersonia spring or autumn because they can flower for nine months. You can have these flowers for nine months. And I had some, that, that one with the two on has been nearly a year. Um, so, you know, if they're happy, they will grow. But here's another nice, I bought this because it's a Cuspersonia cross. Look at the dainty um, leaves. I don't know the other um, dendrobium. It's Agasode monis, Agasode monis. Um, so that is going to be very dainty because it's obviously a smaller plant because these leaves are much smaller. That's growing in the intermediate house as well. But I bought that purely and simply because it was a hybrid and I do things like that. I like the sound of the hybrids. Oh, I'd like to see what those flowers make. Here is a red that I bought from, um, no, 
pink. This is a pink species. This I bought from um, Burnham's Nursery. And in one year, it's on this horrible cork bark. Um, it lost all its leaves. And I didn't think it was going to go. And it was nothing. We had nothing, just roots and a couple of bulbs on this. And I left it and kept on watering it through the winter. And then the following year, last year, it came up with all new. So never, ever think, I think Roger said it before, never think a dendrobium is dead because it is capable of anything, especially these little Cuthbert Sonii. There was nothing, nothing to tell me that something was going to grow out of this. They don't all work. This worked, so... I was quite glad, but um, <sighs> the people that grow these, they often tell us that um, there's a lady, um, she grows a lot of dendrobium, she's a judge, she's up in the north, she's the lady that, the wife of the husband, she helps him with the judging seminars, and she grows dendrobiums beautifully well and she's got lovely sized um, species. So her, when she gave us a talk, I saw the um, idea with the plastic trays and she had them hanging up so that they could get the light. But they'll, the growers themselves that grow them now tell you that the plants need more light than they often receive in cultivation which is why I put them up there. Um, so daytime temperatures in the environment where they live is between 22 and 25, nighttime 10 to 12. In situ, the highest temperatures occur late morning when the skies are clear. The cloud and mist comes in from early afternoon onwards, which prevents any additional warming so they don't get any hotter. Whereas we have silly temperatures up over. I try and keep this to 25 and not got, it's gone up a couple of times to nearly 30, but not much. But also in where they, their normal habit, they um, habitat, there's a sharp contrast between day and night temperatures. So they are found in such a wide range of elevations that they should easily adapt to three to four centigrade, centigrade let's say this properly three to four degrees centigrade or cooler warmer or cooler than indicated so you've got a lot of leeway with these things and so long as you watch them they shouldn't be low down anywhere um i don't sit these anywhere cooler out lower down to keep them cooler they're on the bench the staging height, so all through the year, the ones that are on the bench are on the staging height. The others are hanging, this, these two hanging in the um, eaves. I don't know where you've come out of, go back in there for now. Um, so I don't move them. Um, that is where they grow. They have the wind from the fans, they have the fogger, um, and they have the heat to contend with, but because of the shading that's on, they do okay. I don't have any inlet or outlet fans at all. So, um, you know. Oh, why don't you knock that on the floor? Why is it always a terracotta pot I knock on the floor? Why? Why couldn't it just be a plastic pot? And how can you do it with your leg? Stupid thing. What I also did, this is what I've shown you before from um if i can show you one where's the one around the side this is one let's get it around here then i can show you this here it's not going to tip out so this here i laid the cane down you can see how long it was and you can also see where these have attached so we've got a kiki on there and on there and it's gone into this moss what we've also got here is part of the original stem from the dendrobium that was dying because it was all loose and floppy at the bottom 
So I cut the stems and you cut them between the lines of the canes and you just lay them sideways and there's, look, I'm gonna plant that up in a pot all on its own. Um, it's absolutely wonderful what that one's done. You come out of there and let me put you back in there because you need to be in that moss. And I only took these out of the um, propagator a couple of weeks ago. This one's still small. He's still dinky. I think he was the last one to take. And there's yet to be any, um, lost you again, yet to be any decent roots on him, but he's still putting that up. Um, there, there's a couple. So I've got there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine new plants when they're all um, done and potted up. They're still in the warm house. I still keep them in the warm house for the propagation. Um, and I'll gradually get them used to the intermediate house when it comes from time to move them. I mean, they can flower all year. There's no flowering time for these. They flower when they want. And sometimes you just have to um, repot them whether they've got flowers on or not. So you have to, it's a trade-off. You have to watch it and see what's happening. But they, um, the flowers we know are very long lasting. They can last anything up to 10 months, 12 months. They like very high humidity and plenty of air circulation in our environment, in cultivation. Um, what they get in their natural habitat is real. What we're, we're faking the environment, remember? Um, they do like fertilizer, quarter to half strength, they say, um, of a balanced fertilizer weekly. If you grow them in sphagnum moss, they require little or no fertilizer because you'll burn the roots. Um, and you maintain the growing conditions all year, so you water them. And they like a wet dry, so you water them all year round. Um, I dunk all of these. Oh, more stones come out, thank you. I'll pick them up. I dunk all of these. Um, some of these I bought I bought different ones at different sizes, paid different prices for, but um, I think this is the one that's come out the best this year. I can't remember, I got that last year, I think, from, um, it's your blooming, blooming, where's that loose tag? It's your flipping tag that's come out, you stupid thing. Get in there. And this one, I love the texture of these leaves. I truly do love the texture. Now this one says it's de de bleh, Dendrobium cuspitsonii cross fasulu essiens cross back to cuspitsonii. But look at those flowers. That's a weird shape. So, bit of odd thing. Oh, yeah, definitely a bit of odd thing. She's got a bit of green on that. That's a very odd shaped flower be interesting to see what it comes up with next because it shouldn't be that colour or that shape. We've seen that they, they're pretty uniform shapes. So um, it's this one has not got such a bigger flower as this one. Um, and it's a bit spindly. But you've still got the lovely contrast colour inside. That is a straightforward Sulawesians cross with Cuspitsonii, not cross back to anything. There's a flower going, but um, he's quite tall. Some are taller than others, some are smaller. This one, uh, this one is Cuspitsonii cross cross back to Cuspitsonii bicolor. So it could be any color when that flowers, but it's doing all right. It's got lots of new growth. It's got lots of good leaves. He will need um, potting on because he can't stay in that pot for much longer um, because it won't work. But It truly is a very versatile plant. And if, even if you've got the heat, if you can maintain the level that it likes for the humidity and the 
air movement. Um, I was scared of these to start with, thinking I'm never going to be able to grow them. But the more I've played with them, the happier I've become. One of the members of Bournemouth, she grows a couple in um, pure sphagnum. And she's one, did both put in at the same time, both the same size plants. But um, one didn't like it, it, killed over and died. The other one is flourishing. So anything goes with these. It's, um, I think they're one of the more predictable. Well, if any orchid is predictable, I think it's one of the more predictable um, genuses that we've got. And I love, I just love, I'm a sucker for pink and a flashy pink at that. But I'm also thrilled with what these have come out like because it's um, working. So, and these two bits, that bit and that bit, uh, this one I dropped, well, knocked over and a couple of the ends broke off. Right, that's fine, I'm gonna stick them in there then. So I did, literally. But what I'll need to do is get these others out, put the top back on the propagator and let them take their leaves off and just let them have the cane and recover and then we'll have some more then never know down the line when we've got them sorted and growing in something quite happy i will have that i will sell the others on the spares on um need to get out of here now and put these fans back on because otherwise i truly am going to melt and in 10 minutes the boys won't feed him so toby has to be fed at five o'clock an hour after he's given his medication so we can't um we can't wait any longer because of what he's got wrong with him and we can't fix what's wrong with him so we have to manage him bless him but um he's happy that's all that matters i'm not letting him do anything else with him we will just keep him happy he's got a horrible disease and they can't fix it we have to give him mush for food He's still a happy, bouncy boy, but we have to sit with him. We have to give him special food. He has to be fed three times a day. So it's um, all a bit. He's only 10 as well, poor lum. But it's fine. We'll do what we have to do. And he's not as sick as he used to be. So we manage it well. And uh, that's all good. We can't do it. We can't fix him. They can't make him better. It's something that happens in them and you just have to deal with it like a an illness that you have but i've made some more room in here things are going to change in this greenhouse i think i've waffled on for quite long enough people i hope if you want it to know anything else please message me and ask um i've shown you all that i've got and what i've done so far and I should be quite scared to actually pop those other ones up. But I might just look at the, look at what's inside. And I think it's just moss with those stones. And it's like a very fine gray grit. Might even try to get some because they like it and they like growing in it. So, but they should be able to grow. I don't want them to go backwards. They've got nice roots. So. On that note, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you for watching and listening. And I hope you enjoyed it. It's a lovely genus of plant to get to grips with. And so long as you, well, they're obviously happy, otherwise they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. But Mine aren't always right. I do get some go backwards, so don't think it's that easy because it's trial and error. But I've been trying with this for about three years now. Well, two years definitely, but it's coming up for three years. And um, they're happier now, so I shall carry on with what I'm doing now. So all of you stay safe and we'll see you again next time, hopefully. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.